This is Daddy O from the legendary hip hop band Stetson Sonic. I only touch greatness. You going to be checking out the conversations with Chad. Conversations with Chad because I only touch greatness right here. Yeah. All right. And so, so you brought up the uh, In Full Gear album. So when you look at making a masterpiece like that, what goes into making a classic album like In Full Gear in your eyes? Because I know you mentioned the Sonics and stuff like that, but you know what goes into cohesively making uh, you know a classic masterpiece album like that? Well, so so so, so again, right? It, 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 I don't know the process of other groups. I do know a lot about Public Enemy because me and Chuck was kind of connected at the hip. And while we were doing what we were doing, they were doing what they were doing. But then a lot of other the groups that was out, I don't really know how they do it. I would say trial, error, and experimentation. That's what I would say. Because, right. you know, we, we're experimenting with all types of stuff. Not only um, um, speakers in the studio, but, um, 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 you know, outboard gear, um, you know, uh, you you know uh you know you know what what buttons we turn in what echo chambers we're using um even 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 um uh, uh on on file we 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 mixed to half um um quarter inch when we did in full gear we mixed to half inch you know so a lot of it was us I'm talking Stetsonic now us kind of cutting out musical teeth you know um, but I say experimentation, um, because you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do like, you gotta try to figure some of that stuff out. Like, you know, what's going to happen, what's going to be next, you know, how things are going to sound then later on, what's going to sequence it, all of those particular things. So, um, and then study, you know, study is a big, big thing because, you know, when you're making great records, and I know this just from being a producer, you got to A and B stuff. You know what I mean? You got to you you're gonna listen to some stuff that was already made, and 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 kind of A B your stuff to make sure that it's up to par. Hey, is no one else hear him? I can't hear him. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I, was, I, I wasn't talking. Okay, I was just making oh, sure okay. that wasn't me. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so I wanted to switch gears for a second on you, Daddy O. Um, you've had your hands in quite a few areas outside of hip hop, like the remark, the remix work that you did with like Sonic Youth, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Sublime, uh, Barry White. Even tell me about getting involved in those types of projects. So. There's two sides to it. One is there's a woman, she's a movie maker now, still a good friend of mine named Lisa Cortez, that we were all managed by Rush, right? Rush Artist okay. Management, um, we were all managed by Russell Simmons and Leo Cohen. And Lisa came up with an idea to do um, this, this company called RPM, Rush Producers Management, as a, as a, 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 another stream of income that she could take the guys that were in the group, myself, Grandmaster D, Jam Master J, God bless the dead, um, um, Prince Paul, um, um, of course, the bomb squad that was making the public enemy records and actually, you know, set up a separate stream of income for us to just be producers outside of the, the groups that we were working with, like the groups that we were in. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's how it started. The way I ended up working with the alternative groups is because I already knew that music. So when any work came in for the alternative stuff, I always took it because I I already was listening to Rock Lobster by the B-52s. I already knew who Sublime was. I already knew who Sonic Youth was. A lot of my peers didn't. Like I always make the joke of having to pu push Prince Paul to working with Fine Young Cannibals. Like he did okay. the remix to She Got Me Crazy, but he didn't want to do it. And I was like, oh, Paul, wow. you got to do it. the cannibals. You know what I mean? But they they wasn't into that music. I was into that music. So that's how I ended up, you know, like working with other 
genres of music because most of the other genres of music that I work with, I already was incredibly abreast of. Like even working with Third World, I was already way ahead of working with Third World and Eka Mouse and, and, and Daddy Freddy. I was way ahead of the curve because I was a big reggae fan anyway. So most of the work that I've done as a producer, it's even the same way I make records now. Like when you see the features on my records, the features on my records are all my favorite rappers, the guys I love. So you'll see Bun B on my record. You'll see Pasa Noose from De La Soul on my record. But these are the rappers I love. Like I only do records with rappers that I love. Uh, Rusty Jooks, you know what I mean? Like these are the guys I love, Andre Nicotina, you know what I'm saying? I love these guys. So I end up, and it's the same way that I work with that, with those particular projects. Like it was stuff that I really, really liked. I already had liked the B-52s way earlier than working with them on Love Shack. I had already liked Red Hot Chili Peppers way earlier than working with them on Higher Ground, et cetera, et cetera.